Okay, the next of the Memchas Devarim, the 48 ways is, Noise ba'oilim chavero, when a person bears the burden together with his friend. Says the first Yisrael, what does this mean? Hein betir chasaguf, whether you help him out physically, vein ba'itzas mamin, whether you help him out financially, vein betzar nafsha, if the person is in anguish, emotional anguish, you're supposed to feel the anguish of that which has happened to your friend. If the person himself is lacking the uh, the proper seichel, the proper understanding of the things that are either happening here for right now, or even the more nitzchi, even the more eternal things, don't hold yourself back from giving him the proper advice, the proper help that he needs. to teach him for his benefit by whether in this world or the world to come. Which means, says the Pharisee himself, no matter what this person is going through in his life, whether he is suffering physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, physiologically, whatever the person is going through, someone that cares deeply about their friend, they will be matriach themselves, they will push themselves to be able to help them out. And he brings over here that who is the one that we learn perhaps the most in Tanakh, that you have to fulfill this midah of noise ba'olim chavero, to bear the burden together with your friend. We learn out from Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu was living in the palace, he was living in Paro's palace and he looked out into the, into the fields and he saw the suffering of Klal Yisrael, the Yarvis of Loisam, he saw the suffering that they were going through. And the Midrash says over there the following idea. Moshe when he began crying and he said, I wish that it would be me who's out there. I should be working hard and let my death be instead of them. There's nothing worse. There's no harder work than making the, the bricks and the stones and gathering everything together. So he lowered his own shoulders. And he went and he helped every single Jew that he possibly could. Moshe Ben was the one that went to be able to show them that he was in it together with them. Hashem said, you left your palace, you left your work over here. And you went to see the tzad, the suffering, and the pain of Klal Yisrael. And you became with them like a brother, you treated them like they are the brother, but you became one together with them. So Hashem says, I will leave the El Yoinim, I'll leave the upper worlds. And I will come and I will speak with you. And this is right before the HaKadosh Baruch who comes and appears to Moshe Rabbeinu, which means that if you go out of your way to show another Jew that you care for them, you're here for them, you're listening to them, you're taking care of them, Hashem says, I will come, I will take care of you as well. Perhaps maybe that's the reason why that this is one of the ways to acquire Torah. Because really the greatest tsar, the greatest pain that a Jew should feel is if he's rachag, if he's far away from the Torah and he doesn't understand what the Torah is saying. If you ever see Tamir Chachamim that are involved in sugis, they, they push it, they can't sleep. They spend hours and hours and hours trying to understand one svar in a Rashi, one understanding in the Gemara, one machlek is back and forth. They can't sleep. They're in tsar, they're in anguish. So Hashem says, if you'll take care of my people, so I'll take care of you and I'll give you the, the insight, the siyata, the shemaya, to be able to understand. I just heard a maise today of a yid who went to Eretz Yisrael from New York and he rented like an Airbnb apartment. And you know, they have like um, directories with all the different things. You can go here, you can have vacation here, do this, do that. And had a list of all the gemachs in Yerushalayim where he was staying. And he said the list was long and they had a gemach for everything. Baby bottles, strollers, tables for, for Shalom Zacher, money, whatever you needed, shoes, uh, a kise gagala, the, the wheelchair, whatever person needed, there's a gamach for everything. 
He's reading it, he's all in Hebrew, and one says, Gemach la'oizen. A gemach for ears. He said, that's strange, a gemach for ears? What is a gemach for ears? So he's thinking to himself, maybe they mean really for hearing aids or something like that. So he's trying to figure out, what does it mean, gemach la'oizen, a gemach for ears? So there's a number. So he was very curious, so he calls the gemach for ears. And the woman answers, yes, Shalom, can I help you? He says, you have the gemach la'ozen? You have the gemach for the ears? She said, yes. He said, can you explain to me what is your gemach? She said, listen, I don't have a lot of money. I can't afford to put together baby bottles. I can't afford to put together clothing for the poor. I can't afford to loan money to anybody else. She says, one thing I have that I can offer to Klau Yusel. I have ears. And if anybody ever needs anything, they have a tsar, they have pain, they have anguish, they're going through struggles, they, have, they need to talk to someone, my ears are here to listen to anyone. Gamach la'oizen. Noise ba'oilim chaver, a person feels the pain, they feel the suffering that somebody else is going through and you're together with them. HaKadosh Baruch says, you left your comfort zone, you left... You're Dalit Amot, you left your place where you are, I'm coming down to you, I'll take care of you. And the next one is, Machriya Lechav Zechus, a person who will weigh down the scales in the favor of the person that they are looking at and judging over here. Says the Tiferes Yisrael, Shebi Yoschav Ma'azne Adashel Chaveru Noite Pam Lahara O Pam Lahitiv. Not everybody knows how to make such great decisions the way that everybody here knows how to make decisions perfectly all the time. Other, we don't make mistakes when we have decisions to make. But some, there are people in the world, believe it or not, they don't always know how to make the right decision. And you're watching this person, sometimes they make the right decision, sometimes they make the wrong decision, sometimes they do the right thing, sometimes they do the wrong thing. So the person, they need help. So you can come and you can help influence the way that they think, you can influence their mind, their decision-making process, that they should do the zechos, they should do the right thing instead of doing the wrong thing. Says Tiferes Yisrael, this is the way that you're machri, you weigh down the scales for the side of good for that person. If you see a person who struggles in making right decisions, you'll help them out. And one of the other pshatim, which is obviously one of the, the famous ones, is Shimraz Chaver Oiseh Dover Shev Shel Achir Letzad Avera O Letzad Tzchus. You see somebody do something, and it's the gray area. You're not exactly sure what did they have in mind when we, they were doing this thing. Was it they were doing the right thing or they're doing the wrong thing? It's sometimes questionable when you see a person acting in a certain way. You have to weigh down the scales for the side of good. You cannot be him. You cannot suspect him of doing an avera. In the Machzavitri, a famous commentary writes, If you do this, you're constantly judging a person on the side of good, even though it's easy to see that, that you could say what he's doing is the wrong thing. Kulam, Yahavu, Aisa, everybody will love such a person because they feel that you're never judging them, you're never looking down on them, you're never trying to make them do wrong. I think there's a Misa with the, uh, the Cappuccino Rebbe, the Kapinska Rebbe, I forget exactly what it is. It was a, one of the Rebbe's in, in New York in the, when they were building up the community. Kapinska, I forget the name. So it was once, it was, um, it was Yom Kippur, I mean, if you remember the story correctly, it was, it was Yom Kippur, and he was walking down the street in New York, and he looked into a restaurant as he was passing by, and he saw a Jew from the neighborhood who was eating tray food on Yom Kippur in the restaurant. Pretty shocking thing to see. And you're the Hasidic Sherebbe of the neighborhood, and you see a fellow Jew that you know, on Yom Kippur, in the restaurant, eating tray food. So, 
the Rebbe walked into the restaurant. And he walked over to the man that was sitting there eating tray food on Yom Kippur. And the man was shocked to see the image of the Rebbe there. And the Rebbe told him, he said, Ah! He says, you're eating le te'ovoim. He says, you're eating the food because, you're, because of the geshmak, the hunger that you're having out of it. To make it that he was eating the te'ovoim because he was hungry and he wanted to eat, not because he was doing it lahachis, that he was doing it to go against HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So he was trying to downsize the Avera that this Jew was doing on Yom Kippur. And the man said that it made such an impression on the Rebbe cared so much to judge him in that way of course, he got up and he walked out of there. He wasn't going to eat anymore on Yom Kippur. So if you're a person that is going to look for the good in a person, even when you could certainly judge it as being the wrong thing, says the Machsevich, everybody will love you. Because if they always see that, you're always seeing the best in them, so then also, as Hashem, they'll see the best in you as well. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow.